G'day everybody, where's Swally here? Hey, well, Jaron had Lindsay from New Zealand on again this week for part two. Seems Jaron is really digging deep and workshopping really hard to find a way to explain the 24-hour sun, the not setting of the sun, and the going behind him of the sun on Union Glacier. Jaron is confident that it won't do this, but the Boy Scout in him is telling him to be prepared. Anyway, I have listened to two and a half hours of these two, so you don't have to. Now I'm going to bring you the highlights, or the lowlights, or the magnetically vortex non-dipping mirrored midlights of this video. Today's sponsor is Word Salad. You know, when you don't have a clue yourself and you want to sound intelligent to your friends and family, try the all new Word Salad. Just use lots of big words that they don't know and voila, you sound like a genius to them. Anyway, let's have a look. So in this tropical gap here, it's, it's the dielectric zone between the two magnetic fields of the north and the south. So we have a, uh, let's back up a bit. What you've got to realize is that is the Arctics, the Arctics are the same. They're both North Poles. And this is where we can catch them out because I've put up this challenge. If anybody can prove to me that the dip compass does not dip at the Arctic and the Antarctic, They'll, they'll get 10,000. If they do the experiment with me and challenge me, they'll have to pay me 10 grand when they find that it dips at both both Arctics. You're saying the same side of the needle dips at both Arctics? Yes. If you took a north a north northern hemisphere compass and took it to the south, it would dip, it would dip at the Antarctic as well as the Arctic. The south pole is either side of the tropics. So understanding capacitance, you have your two positive, two positive plates. Both North Poles? 10 grand, you say? Okay, it's only Kiwi money, but still, 10 grand is 10 grand, hey? We might just be able to relieve you of that, Lindsay. Now, let's just see if we can work out exactly what your claim is. That's, that's the guts of it, so... Well, that's a good one because that can be tested. I, I love things that we can test because, I mean, there's one, yeah, the, yeah. one theory tells us that the compass would dip opposite in the north than the south you're saying it would dip the same north and south so that's very easy to determine okay kyle gray says only one question at a time explain the model simply so well i guess let's say that you have uh, a class of third graders here well jaron we can test it and we can split the price seems fair because the sun the image of the sun but the true the true sun is, is, on the, is on the knee joint of the Milky Way as it pops into the center Arctic. And it's, and it's, aiming, it's aiming out across the hole, like that, that up there. You see that? Oh, yeah. There's the black hole. There's the sun. Milky Way is over here, coming over to where we see the sun. But the real unseen plasma sun is created back there. And this magnetic induction through capacitance here is feeding through the Milky Way, feeds the energy, sucks it up like a vacuum, sucks it over into the real sun, feeding the real sun, which then sends back an image for us to see. It's like TV or radio, wa wa you know, picking up your radio waves. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you get that? Because otherwise... Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's a, a little bit <laughs> too much, but... Uh, Lindsay, Jaron... He's not getting it. It's the projection of the actual sun back in creation, sending the image back, just like we get an image on our TV. Watching TV in your lounge, it's not. It's nothing in behind the TV, is it? It's coming from over there, out there somewhere. And send it back. Same thing. So we've, we've sent this image, and like it says in the book, all the celestial bodies are there for signs. So, like this picture here is what a hydrogen alpha shows us is the sun. So you're saying this is just a some sort of a uh, projected image of the plasma sun. Hydrogen alpha sunscope. What a great idea, Jaron. Is that right? Well, I don't know if they've dodged up that photo or what. I mean, to, it's the, the sun we see is just pure white light. I don't know where they get those stupid images from. Yeah, they use a hydrogen alpha telescope, and I don't know much about it other than you know to look through a telescope yeah. and see this is pretty, uh, pretty crazy. It kind of gives you an idea that this is more of a 
something that's it's, there. It's, it, yeah. it's, it's fakery, I'm pretty sure of it. Those stupid images are straight from the camera of a hydrogen alpha telescope. Nobody is doctoring up anything, Lindsay. Well, I mean, yeah, you, you'd have to call what the work that Crow does, uh, you know, fake. I don't know if that's, I don't know if I'd go there, but uh, I do agree that I was shocked when I saw it as well. He does his own photos, does he? Yeah, he just got a new telescope, a uh, hydrogen alpha yeah, well, telescope. Well, it all depends on your filters, doesn't it? What you, yeah, the hydrogen know, alpha is the filter, I guess. That's the type of telescope it is. But I'll look into that a little bit more to see if we can get to the bottom yeah. of what they're seeing. Now, wouldn't it be so great, Jaron, to have you on Union Glacier looking with a hydrogen alpha telescope and someone in, oh, let's say, Australia looking at the sun at exactly the same time? Let's see if we can see the same sunspots and prominences with our same telescopes. That'd be great. So that's that. And then, then you've got to consider the, um, the magnetic flux of the, uh, of the Earth, how it pumps up and down in a vortex system, just like the human heart does. The human heart is a vortex. So if someone wants to know how the Earth pumps up and down, we'll go and ask someone who knows how the heart pumps up and down. Is there a switch on the wall? No. It's just this... this this vortex system that just pumps. Heart just pumps? Well, okay, Lindsay, but so there is no nerves driving the various heart muscles and keeping them in the right sequence to squeeze the blood through the valves and create the flow. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find that the human pump is a positive displacement pump, not a vortex pump, mate. I just love watching Jaron trying and hoping to get something to hang his hat on. He must be rather scared of this 24-hour sun outcome, me thinks. In here, very weak, because the, the field's coming down into the ground here and here. This is why you get um, turbulence every time you cross the 22.3 degree line in the aeroplanes. And then my... Now we can test her. Girlfriend's an airline awesome. hostess, and she I was questioning her about um, what's the what's the term when the airplanes drop out of the sky? Right, it's over the kid in air pocket. They say it's still turbulence, isn't it? Yeah. And I says, oh, I suppose it's in, uh, above the equator somewhere. And she goes, yeah. So that's where you get a lack of air because the winds don't cross the tropics. The wind, the currents, they don't cross the tropics. Specifically, the magnetic field. So there's another killer for you the old globe. You mean they don't cross the equator? You're saying they don't cross the tropics? Doesn't cross the doesn't cross the tropics. I feel your confusion, Jaron. But you have to realise that to Lindsay, equator and tropics are all the same thing, or exactly different. Who really knows? And Jaron, why are you subjecting yourself to all this loss of brain cells? Some of these people, people in chat are hilarious sometimes. It's just funny. I had to watch some of this video a few times to grasp them, but now I do. It's no question. So that's Jeff Gadboys. He's uh, on board with you. Um, a star wouldn't make it past the sun in one day unless you have a 16-hour sun or more. What? The stars what? don't move across the face of the sun in one day. They take days. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe two days. I mean, if you, you can go look at uh, Stellarium and just move the sun from one day to the next, and you'll notice a star go pretty much more than halfway across it, so two days max. I could show that uh, if anyone wants to see. I'll just write no, that well, the first, the, the first year I looked into Flat Earth, I bought, got a telescope or camera, started looking at the moon, and then uh, that, the pretty well around springtime when there's an equi equilibrium, I looked at the sun, and there's the flipping stars. And I looked online, there's no mention of the black spot from the stars at that time. Thought, what are these then? They're not even talking about them. Mm -hmm. So I tracked it all the way up. It took about, I was watching it for about four days, I think, and then I forgot about it. And it was going all the way up from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Uh, sure I'll just read you some of the physics then regarding this capacitor system creating the sun. Now, Lindsay thinks sunspots are stars on the face of the sun. Now, isn't that just hilarious? All right, so that should be, oh, you can't see that. There you go. So this is just a view from Stellarium. Again, I'm not saying this is exactly as it is. Obviously, could be different, but most part, I think it matches. So you'll see, oh, you can't see the time period here at the bottom, but I'm just going to move it forward by a day. So it's right now, it's on 7-11-2024. 
I'm hitting it now, it's at 712. Okay, so back here, 711, 712. So you'll notice that that's one full 24 hours. So watch these two stars here. I'm going from 711 to 712. So you'll see how far they move just in one day. So the same thing would be true if we spun this around a little bit. So it can't take more yeah. than two days to get across the sun. No, it depends on which, which stars. I mean, how close are they? There's, there's this all this depth. What? And I had a snicker because Lindsay asked, are the stars close? And Jaron nailed it with his response that they all move the same. Well done, Jaron. It, it's, it's depth to the atmosphere, like there's closer stars to you than No, but the stars, the stars are all going to make the same move in 24 hours. They can't be some move differently than others. Uh, see, so like, for instance, watch yeah. this. Each step that I take is a day. So, I, God, you can't really see that very well. Let me try and shrink this up this way. There you go. Now you can see the date. That's what I wanted to do. Hold on one second. Yeah, but you got to think, where are those stars in relation to the sun? The original sun. So. Oh, well, no, I'm just talking about the sun that we see. Because if you think about what, what um, Austin Thompson has shown, is he's shown sunspots that move across the face of the sun in about, I'd have to ask him, I'm guessing it's six, seven days, but I could be off by that by a little bit. But you'll see a sunspot, it's the same one that moves slowly across the sun. So this, now I'm just going to punch forward an hour or a day. See how we're at 7-7? Seven, seven? So now we're at 7-8. So watch this star was sought here. So 7-8, seven, 7-9, seven, mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. and now it's past it. So it can't, yeah. be, can't be more than a day that it takes. Right there, it's no, behind it, the it, sun. It, then the next day, it's way past it. it. It's anamorphic techniques and perspective effects to create fake architecture. Right, so if you watch that again, um, yeah. the, that thing there that oh. we talk about, this looks like a vestibule or some sort of, a, what do they call it? A cupola, but it's actually this is all flat ceiling. Yeah, so that's more divine information because you know once you're in, uh, enlightened or you're partway there, you find the the moon doesn't have craters; they're like blisters. And then I, I got some people interested, and they started seeing it. So it's really hard to imagine that you're, you're not, you know, you think you're looking at a blister and the shadows and all that, but a, a flick of the old mind switch. And you, all of a sudden you're seeing blisters and the dark spot is unmanifested moon. It's, just, it's not illuminated yet because where do all those craters and all that go to anyway when the moon is full? They will disappear. It's all, it's all chem, alchemical. But once you, when you see those blisters, you go, oh, my goodness. And that's like the magic of the, uh, the 3D projection from magnetism. When Ken Wheeler shows the magnet up here, and the pharaoh cell, and he's holding a magnet up here. Moon doesn't have craters but blisters. Yeah, right, mate. You better have another look. It's male and female. The sun is hermaphrodite. The sun is male and female. Adam, which is Adam, that's the male and female, wanted a partner. So Adam's up here on the 2D plane. So what does he do? Separate the female out, and all of a sudden, Boom, he's got the moon down here, the female, and there's the male. And the story is all about coming back to singularity, back to the sun every month. The moon comes back into singularity, one for one every month, and then wanders up, or the sun races ahead, leaves it behind, and catches up again. They're always coming back together, going like this all the time. Kevin Faye says, Jaron, do you think he's explained the 24-hour, 360-degree sun in, in the Antarctic? No, I wouldn't say that it's been explained any better than, than a – if let's say I went down, for example, and saw the sun in Antarctica. I mean, I wouldn't say, oh, Lindsay explains it better than the, than the globe does. But that's because I haven't looked yeah. into it enough. I haven't studied it enough to truly understand it because um, I don't understand, like, the, the north popping out, popping in. I can see you're still just as confused about how Lindsay's model works, or doesn't. Let me tell you, Jaron, just between you and me, Lindsay's model, it doesn't work. But we get to see that you are really, really wanting something that does work for what you're about to see. Hey, Jaron, you know those tourist signposty things that you're often seen at touristy locations? You know, the ones with signs pointing to all the major capitals around the world. Well, there's one of those on Union Glacier. So when you're there, can you please get me a photo of it? at uh, all, let's say, midnight, when it's in the direct sunlight. That'd be great. Now, I asked my loyal subs to send me images of it, and 
So far, this is my favourite. Jiren, um, where is the sun in this image to cast those shadows? Oh mate, you know the one word response that we all want to hear from you? Come on, you can do it. Just say the line. Well, to be fair, I think Jaren at the end of all of that was just going through the motions and trying to be nice. I don't know if he's going to end up with Lindsay back again. I really don't think Jaren got the answers for which he was looking for. So congratulations, Jaren, for being a demonstrable realist and trying to get some testable reality into the whole situation. I think this will fare you well when it comes to Antarctica in December, mate. It'll be great to see a demonstrable realist on Union Glacier with us. Down, but I can try and yeah, try and draw that out just as a, as an idea, just how how it would yeah. happen at the end of the clock hand versus because yeah. the, the inside of the clock hand also sees the sun go around them. When the sun gets up the clock hand towards the north, they see it go around. So I guess I don't see where it disappears from going around people throughout the clock hand, but then at the very end, we say it does the same thing again. Yeah. So it must be down about the 65 degree mark where they don't want you going beyond. That's exactly where it begins, supposedly. Is where you, is where you start realizing, shit, there's two suns. Correct, yeah. Because you know, you know the sun's going around up here. How the hell is going to be going around down here? Right. Oops. Thanks, guys.